There are tons of dividend paying stocks out there, but they're not all built the same. And in this video, I'll be going over seven top ones that I personally have in my portfolio. I'll go over the dividend rates, important statistics that you should know, and why I like them. Now, a quick definition of what dividends are. They're basically a discretionary distribution of profits paid out to investors. And companies, they make a revenue, right? And a portion of this is gonna be profit. What can they actually do with that profit? Well, they can put it back into the business to grow and innovate it. They can choose to actually buy up companies with that capital or they can actually reward shareholders. So every company that we're talking about on this list, they choose to pay out a portion of their profits as dividends, meaning they're choosing to reward people like us for holding their stock. When done right, having a dividend portfolio can ensure that you're getting consistent payouts for your stocks. And especially in a time like this, this can definitely be extremely attractive. So let's get started. The first stock we're talking about is Home Depot stock ticker HD. If you live in the US, you obviously know the store. And beyond being a pretty good dividend stock, Home Depot has actually earned investors return of 88% over the last five years. One share of Home Depot is currently trading at $291.17. And if you take a look at the one-year price chart, you guys can see it has been uh, sort of up and down. It did reach a low of about $270 back in June of last year, as well as September and November. But we did see highs in August with it shooting up to $325 a share, as well as more recently when it hit over $330 per share. But now it's back down, trading at about $290. So let's take a look at the dividend yield. Uh, right now, Home Depot pays out a 2.67% dividend, which is definitely higher than the sector average. So this means that for every share of Home Depot that you own, you're going to make $2.09 quarterly. This is a payout ratio of 46.68%. And if you guys don't know what a payout ratio is, it's basically how much they are paying out in dividends divided by the total net profit. So obviously you want this ratio to be lower. Anything under 50% is normally pretty good. We've seen dividend growth for 14 years, and you can sort of see that growth over the past months on this little chart right here. They're a huge company. They have a market cap of $292 billion. We have a five-year expected peg ratio of 1.7. And as you guys can see, analysts are rating a Home Depot as a 2.3, meaning it's a buy, with the average analyst price target at $327, which is a good amount higher than the current price. Now, I don't buy dividend stocks just for the dividend, although that is definitely a plus. I definitely care that they are a long-term company because even though companies can pay out dividends, you know, if the price of the company falls, then you're still losing money. And so for Home Depot, I think this is a great company. I really do believe in them long term, and that's why they are on this list. A big reason for Home Depot's financial success is its dominance in the home improvement sector. Their biggest competitor is going to be Lowe's, but Home Depot is definitely still quite a bit ahead of them. They have a larger market share, and one reason for that is because Home Depot caters to a lot of professional contractors, whereas Lowe's, they tend to attract more consumers. They're also more profitable, meaning they have a higher operating margin, and they also have a better outlook for fiscal year 2023, where they sort of expect sales to be flat while Lowe's thinks that their sales are going to go down a bit. As we saw, they pay out a pretty healthy dividend of about 2.7%. They've seen a lot of growth with their dividend. And yeah, I think this is a pretty safe company that you guys can pick up and rely on their quarterly dividend payments to get some extra cash flow. Okay, so the second stock that we're talking about is Procter & Gamble, stock ticker PG. Right now, one share of PG is trading for about $150. And if you take a look at the one-year price chart, you guys can see we were at a high of over $160 per share. It dropped all the way down here to about $123 a share in October of 2022. Rose back up came back down and is now back on the upward trend. The current dividend yield of PG is 2.42%, meaning that for every share of the stock that you own, you're gonna get 91 cents in dividend payments every quarter. This payout ratio is a bit higher at 64.07%, which is over 50%, but it's not too bad. But it does show that their main goal is to sort of reward shareholders and not put it back into their business. Now, Procter & Gamble, they have a market cap of $360 billion, and right now their five-year expected peg ratio is 4.58. And it's a rating Procter & Gamble as a 2.3, meaning it's also a buy. And the average analyst price target is $155, which is just a few percent higher than the current price. Now, one thing I do like about Procter & Gamble is that they have an operating margin of 21.61%, which is significantly better than its competitor, Kimberly Clark. In fiscal year 2022, they basically generated $14 billion. And that is a pretty good increase in revenue compared to fiscal year 2019, when they generated about $12 billion. They saw a 5% organic sale 
sales boost for the period that ended in late December. And another thing is that they were able to increase their prices by about 10% last year, which offset the 6% decrease in sales volume. Now, in terms of its outlook, we have a 2023 growth forecast of between 4 and 5%. And yeah, going back to the dividend, I know this is not a super high paying dividend stock, but it's a very, very stable company. I feel like I'd feel a little bit bad to share companies that are more risky, even though there are some riskier stocks on this list. But yeah, this is definitely not one of them. You guys know Procter & Gamble. They are here to stay. And I think not only is this a great buy for the long term in terms of like price appreciation, but the added dividend payment of 2 point something percent is definitely a great bonus for owning this company. So you may already know what high dividend stocks are and how they can help you make consistent income. But the next step is actually finding stocks that fit the criteria. So I use Moomoo. And as you guys can see, there is a high dividend stock list in the app. Here, you can easily pick high dividend stocks by clicking on markets and clicking high dividend under featured lists. This is basically where you can see the dividend details of the stocks you want to invest in. They also have an intelligent profit and loss analysis that will do an audit of your current investment portfolio, which I found super helpful. Now's the time to join because you'll get up to 15 free stocks when you join and fund your account. Plus, they're actually giving out a free one month subscription to Benzinga Pro for new users. Beyond that, it really is a perfect platform for beginner traders as they have over 2,500 free investing courses, hands on paper trading, and 24 7 customer service that can answer trading questions quickly. So join me and 19 million other people who use Moomoo as their preferred stock investing platform. The link is down below in the description. Again, don't miss out on claiming your free stocks by using the link down below. Thanks to Moomoo for making this video possible. And now back to the video. So the next stock on our list is Altria stock ticker MO. So one share of Altria is trading at $44.50. And if you take a look at the price chart, you can see the price for MO was hit pretty hard in the last year. We started at about $55 a share, drastically dropped all the way down to in the 40s. And since then we've remained sort of consistent in price with it now in the mid 40s. Altria definitely has a very high dividend yield. It's at 8.35%. This is much higher than the sector average. And so this basically means that for every share of MO that you have, you're gonna be paid 94 cents per quarter. This is a payout ratio of 76.78%, which is pretty high, you guys. This is why this is a more risky investment uh, than the previous ones and a lot of the other ones we're talking about in this video. But I still think Altria is a pretty good investment. It's not the most risky and you know that 8.35% dividend yield is definitely pretty juicy. It's seen really good dividend growth throughout the years. And so yeah, it's really hard to think, hey, this company is just gonna stop paying dividends, which is something that could happen with a lot of these high dividend yield companies. Now, right now, analysts are rating Altria as a 2.8, meaning that it is a hold. And if we look at the average analyst price target, that's at $49.63, which is about 10% higher than the current price. Now, I was a little bit hesitant to talk about uh, Altria because it is a tobacco company. And yeah, tobacco companies, they don't have the best rep. But in terms of a business standpoint, in terms of an investment standpoint, I think this is a really good company to have. We are in sort of a transition period for these types of companies because, I mean, smoking is down a lot right? It's been down about 40% over the last two decades. And so that's really what's creating this big shift in the industry. A lot of companies like Altria, they are shifting towards smokeless products. And I really do think that Altria is well positioned because they have very strong cash reserves and they're also snatching up a lot of companies. For example, Enjoy, which is an e-cigarette company. I also think that Altria is somewhat undervalued right now. I know it's not doing that well in terms of its growth and share price. I mean, in the last year, the stock was definitely hit pretty hard. It's also facing a lot of new problems as a result in the shift in this industry. And how could we forget that disaster jewel acquisition in 2018? But overall, I think this is a pretty great company to have, especially with that high dividend yield. I think the risk might be worth it for that high dividend payment. Uh, although treasury bills, they are paying close to 5% as of this time. So yeah, it's really up to you guys if you wanna take that risk. But for now, this is definitely a stock that is in my personal portfolio. And yeah, the dividend payments are definitely pretty sweet. So next up, we have Bank of America. This is obviously one of the biggest banks in the US. They have 67 million customers and small business clients. And I know you guys are thinking, Charlie, why are you recommending a bank stock, especially with what's going on with SVB and the whole banking industry? And yeah, there are people out there that are saying they will never invest in banking stocks again. For example, Kevin O'Leary. But personally, I think it's a little bit overplayed. I feel like Bank of America is in a place where it's 
it's not really going to be that affected. Maybe in terms of profit, it will be hurt a little bit, but in terms of a meltdown, I don't think that's gonna happen with Bank of America. So yeah, right now, one share of Bank of America BAC is trading at $27.94. And yeah, if we look at the one-year price chart, you guys can see one year ago, it was trading at close to $40 per share. It's had its uh, ups and downs. And right now, of course, we did see a big decrease in the price, and that's why it's in the high 20s right now. In terms of its dividend, right now the dividend yield is 3.1%. This is a good amount higher than the sector average. Uh, and this means that for every one share of Bank of America, you're gonna be paid 22 cents every quarter. This is a payout ratio of 27.15%, which is really good, really healthy. Here we can look at the dividend amount per share over the last uh, you know dozen quarters. And if we look at what analysts have to say, they are reading BAC as a 2.4, meaning it's between a buy and a hold. And then the average price target is about $37, which is about 30% higher than the current price. So the next earnings date is gonna be April 18th. So this might be after you guys watch this video and they're expected to report earnings of 76 cents uh, per share, which is a year year over year decline of 5%. And yeah, as you guys saw in March, the price fell about 17%, which was a pretty tough blow for the stock. But yeah, overall, I do like Bank of America because you know it's actually avoided being really affected by the whole meltdown recently. In my opinion, it's been more sentiment that has caused this decline in price. And so yeah, that's why I do think there is quite some upside in the uh, price of Bank of America. This is a stock that I've held for a long, long time, like over a decade. And in doing my research, I've also not really seen any sign of uh, liquidity uh, concerns. You know, these are concerns that really affect some of these smaller uh, regional banks, but not a behemoth like Bank of America. This is definitely a heavyweight stock, right? The uh, dividend payment is not the highest, but it's pretty good for a banking stock. And it's definitely a stock that I have been holding on for a long time, as I said, and will continue to hold on to for a long time. Overall, I think it's pretty cheap right now, but the big question is like, do you actually want to buy bank stocks? I encourage you guys to do your own due diligence on whether or not you want to take the risk, but I don't think there's that much risk, at least for this stock. And yeah, I know it's not a sexy stock to hold, but it's definitely a long-term pick for myself. I do think that the profitability of banks like Bank of America can be hurt in the future, uh, just due to more strict rules and regulations. These can all affect the liquidity uh, requirements, as well as the types of banking products that they can have. So yeah, that's definitely something to consider with bank stocks like Bank of America. All right, the next stock we're talking about is PepsiCo, stock ticker PEP. Right now, one share of PepsiCo is trading at $183.20. If we take a look at the one-year price chart, you guys can see it's been up and down just like most stocks. About one year ago, it was in the low 170s. We did drop down uh, all the way to the 150s, then went back up and then down and then back up, down and then back up to where it is right now. The dividend yield for Pepsi is 2.51%, which means that for every share of the stock that you hold, you're gonna get $1.15 per quarter. This is a payout ratio of 67.69%, which is a little bit high. But if you guys look at the dividend growth, you guys can see it's been really, really good. And then in terms of what analysts have to say, they are rating it a 2.5, meaning it's between a buy and a hold. And the average analyst price target is $191.13, which is under 5% higher than the current price. So as you guys might have seen, Pepsi released a new logo recently. This is the first new logo since 2008. And yeah, this definitely brings a lot of buzz to the company. And I actually really like this new logo. As you guys saw, it's been performing quite well recently. It's actually up about 9.3% over the past year, making it the 18th consecutive quarter of positive revenue. Now, you might be wondering why I chose Pepsi instead of Coca-Cola. That's also another stock that does pay a dividend. For me, I think they're both great companies, but I just tend to sort of prefer Pepsi as a company. And yeah, they have a very diversified portfolio of other brands within their business. For example, Quaker Oats, Doritos, 7-Up, Gatorade, and Cheetos. And while they did experience margin pressure, pressures in the past due to supply chain issues uh, and increasing costs for labor and transportation. The great news is that they showed in quarter three of last year that they actually have the ability to navigate through these tough times uh, to still produce earnings growth. They also recently just announced a $216 million partnership with three major farmer facing organizations. And this is basically going to support more than 3 million acres of US farmland. This is really important because it's gonna allow them to build an even more resilient food system. And that is super essential to PepsiCo's uh, whole business. In terms of taste, I don't know if I like Pepsi more than Coca-Cola. I think they taste pretty much the same. But yeah, overall, I think this is a great uh, low risk dividend stock that pays about 2.5% uh, every single year. It's a company that you can sort of buy and forget about and just collect that consistent income. And yeah, that's why it's on this list of stocks. All right, next 
Next up is the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF, stock ticker SCHD. Now you guys probably already know, but this is not an individual company. And if you guys have watched my content, you know that I'm really big on index funds and ETFs, where you can basically buy one thing and invest in tons and tons of different companies. So yeah, this is an ETF that really focuses on higher dividend companies. And as you guys see, when you guys buy this stock, you're basically buying a basket of dividend paying stocks. So right now, one share of SCHD is trading at $73.23. If we take a look at the one year price chart, you guys can see it's down about 17.19%. We were close to $80 one year ago. It sort of dropped down and then went back up and then dropped back down, forcing a pretty big rally at the end of 2022. Since then, it's sort of been level, dropped down, and is now going back up. Now, the dividend yield for SCHD is a pretty good 3.61%. We also have an average P ratio of 13.89, which is pretty good. If we take a look at the fund overview, you guys can see this is a large value fund. It's hosted by Schwab with net assets of over $46 billion. And the dividend yield of SCHD is a very good 3.61%. For ETFs, I think it's really important to look at what sectors are in this uh, portfolio. You guys can see we're really big in consumer cyclical, uh, financial services, consumer defense, healthcare, energy, industrials, and technology. And yeah, these are some of the top 10 holdings that account for about 41% of total assets. And yeah, as you guys can see, Pepsi is right here, and so is Home Depot. For every share of SCHD that you guys have, you're gonna be paid about 60 cents every single quarter. At least that's the current dividend amount. And you guys, this is definitely a buy and hold type of dividend ETF. And its whole purpose is basically to track the Dow Jones Dividend 100 Index, which mainly focuses on generating consistent and sustainable dividends. Overall, I think this is one of the best dividend ETFs that's out on the market. There are other ones like VYM, which are also really great. And yeah, another reason why investors really love this ETF is because its expense ratio is really low at 0.06%. This isn't as low as some of the Vanguard ETFs out there, but it's still really good for a dividend focused ETF. You want something that's passively managed just like this ETF, because it means that you're gonna save a ton of money in fees over the course of your lifetime. Overall, very safe stock that I would definitely recommend getting. It's not very exciting at all, but this is definitely one of those uh, ETFs that you just buy consistently, you dollar cost average into it, you collect the consistent dividend payments, and you spend your time focusing on generating more income and doing other things uh, besides investing in stocks. And then next we have Realty Income Corporation, stock ticker O. This is a REIT, also known as a real estate investment trust. And so yeah, it's basically a company that owns income producing real estate assets. Right now, one share of Realty Income Corporation is trading at $62.65. Here's the price chart over the last year. You guys can see we did have some ups and downs. We started off over $70 a share, dropped down a bit, went back up to over 70 to close to $75. Saw a big drop at the end of 2022. And since then it's gone up down and then back up a little bit. So one reason why I really love Realty Income is because it has a great dividend payment. Its current dividend yield is 4.75%. This means that for every share of Realty Income, you're getting 25 cents every single month. Now I know the payout ratio is above 100%, and this just basically means that the dividends of this REIT are higher than income projected for future operations. This means that they're pulling from their cash reserve, and this is okay in the short term, but it's not the best for the long term, of course. Here's the dividend amount per share over the last dozen quarters or so. And then as far as what analysts have to say, they are rating it a 2.4, meaning it's between a buy and a hold. And the average analyst price target is about $70.50, which is a bit under 15% higher than the current price. So yeah, Realty Income, I think it's one of the better REITs out there. They currently have over 12,000 real estate properties in their portfolio, with most of them under long-term lease agreements. And they've also been operating for about 54 years. Recently, they declared their 633rd consecutive monthly dividend, which is really cool. If you want some real estate exposure, I think this is a great company to own. And yeah, despite the prices you know, going up and down over the last few years, it's been very consistent with its dividend payment, which is really amazing. I know a lot of people there extremely scared about real estate right now just due to the high rates and the impending uh, housing bubble. But I really think that's pretty overplayed. And even though interest rates are really high right now, there's still great demand for real estate, especially income producing real estate. And yeah, Realty Income
income, they're definitely pros at that. I know seeing that payout ratio can be a little bit scary, but it's not too out of the ordinary for REITs. Now, if you guys have not yet diversified your stock portfolio to include companies that hold income producing real estate, I think this is a pretty safe and great long-term hold just for that. So if you guys are looking for some real estate exposure in a great company that pays out a very great uh, monthly dividend, then realty income could be a great choice. Anyways, that's it for this video. I really hope you guys got some value from it. You guys probably noticed dividend stocks have become more and more popular over the last couple of years, just because they are a little bit more resistant uh, to the ups and downs of the market. And they also pay out consistent income, which is something that a lot of people value right now. But yeah, this is just my experience. These are just my opinions. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. So I really encourage you guys to do your own due diligence before investing in anything, especially stocks. And yeah, again, I really encourage you guys to use the link down below to sign up for Moomoo. When you guys use my link, you'll get a ton of free stocks and that is really going to kickstart your portfolio. So yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe for more content just like this. I make a ton of videos about personal finance, investing, and entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.